Take you back to one of our top stories this evening. Pro-democracy protests in the streets of Eswatini have forced businesses to close their doors as, uh, of course, coming after an impromptu curfew and the shutting of Internet services exacerbating that situation. Reports from the kingdom suggest that a number of people have been killed amid claims of martial law. For more, we're now joined by Eswatini Communist Party's General, General Secretary, Togazani Gunene. Very good evening to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on Newsroom Africa. You have uh, sent out a heavily worded statement speaking about uh, some issues when it comes to the situation in Eswatini. Talk us through some of those really imperative issues. Thank you very much, Mpo, and uh, good evening to your viewers. Uh, truly, we have not, not necessarily been making strong statements. We are making our own accurate response to the development and the situation in the country, which we are seeing it as horrible as many people have been killed or ambushed or you know, one another assassinated by the regime uh, in response to the protest for democracy of the people of Sosan. And in some of the matters and the aspects that you've raised are the number of uh, killings that we have seen and you saying that the military is uh, doing all it can to conceal evidence that there are in fact a lot more people that have been killed than what we are uh, aware of uh, as, as a nation and as the story develops throughout the, the days. Uh, before the military uh came in uh, the protests. The protesters were, had never uh, killed anyone in the course of the protest, but they were sending a strong message to the regime, which was their last effort, and our last effort now in the struggle, that we need to put the enemy in, under pressure to force the regime to submit to the demands of the people. And the condition, or I would say the, the, the perspective was to shut down the country, to stop the economy so that the regime could hear to the people because literally so and this and this government have refused to listen in fact not to refuse but has rejected the call for democracy in the country the intervention of the military or the unleash of the military by Mswat, who actually in our view was now communicating he might appear not to have said anything but to us as a communist party he has communicated because the instruction for the army to kill our people is this order and no one else can issue that order Yes, it is an at unprecedented levels, and more people are dying. And literally, as uh, uh, um, so this Prime Minister uh, Masugu has said that he cannot even calculate. I think he's making it a very strong as a pronouncement that he's still going to do and will collect all the data at the end of anything. But actually, he knows and he knows how he could calculate it. We based on the number of bullets that the army and the police have been instructed to use, and also then from there he will make deduction. I think those that we have not quite equally qualified to the numbers of death, it would be missed targets because I think the aim is to kill our people. And that is what we must mobilize to stop now because it is now the heat obstructing the call for democracy or the pressure that has been exerted for democracy. So a hill that appears to be a bit higher, we might have no experience of climbing that hill, but I think we must be determined, we'll climb it and I think we'll chop it because after, beyond the, the, on the other side of the hill, there is peace, there will be democracy, but now we are faced with this obstruction and really it is new, it is a phenomenon that we must learn to, to adapt to. And we are calling our people not to despair, not to ever think it is not, necess it is not necessary to fight for strike. But such kind of pain and such kind of losses in life literally means to us we need to fight more and continue to fight with them. And to those who have lost their lives, I think we will never betray them. And everyone must stand up, including the people in the diaspora, in many particular in South Africa. Many people of Swaziland are staying in South Africa. It is time now, I th we think they must come up and then raise their voice, make their opinion. It needs practical action now because the situation is getting more and more horrible. Because it's clear that the regime, so that this regime is adamant. They are prepared to cling to power irrespective of the mass rejection because he has got comfort that the world order still accepts him as a, a president or a leader or a head of state, which and, and honestly, he has no support of an inch to the population. Only what he can do now is to try to destroy our population. We need to stand up and defend our population. As you make that call, calling for the need to stand up and defend the population, we're also learning that communication has been cut in Eswatini. And this is something that has since been dismissed by the Prime Minister as fake news. It would be very unfortunate to think you could uh, 
we can still believe what uh, uh, comes on that other side. Because I think that other side is, is, is nothing literally now that pronounces anything of substance that has got meaning to what really happening is happening in the country. Because all what they are doing or what their effort is about is that they want to leave power after they've committed serious crimes to our population. So there would be nothing that could be taken serious from a criminal regime like that one. So in fact, as he says, and as they are doing, they have been always opening the lines when they want to communicate their own messages. So they are closing it, and they, when they communicate, they always say the communication system allows the, the spread of the, of, 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 the, of, of, of the confrontation. And that, this confrontation is naturally targeted at them. And it literally is correct to say or to think in that way that the disruption has been, the, 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 the whole effort of the, of the structure has disrupted all the infrastructure or most of the infrastructures. But actually to us, it is the correct way to deal with it. But the infrastructure for communication, it is still in their hands and they're doing deliberate to try to conceal their dirty work. Every time when the network is off, more deaths are happening, more, more shooting take place. And that is actually a resemble of the statistics, which yes, it will be very difficult to prove of now, but bodies are seen on the surfaces. Nurses admitting I am wrapping up bodies in the, in the hospital. So I think these are practical realities that we cannot hide. Yes, he is saying he will, but you don't think he, he will have that opportunity to come back and calculate those bodies. Instead, he must be accountable for all those deaths. But not only him, but his principal, who appears to be hiding today. One day he must come out and account to these realities. Otherwise, mm. our struggle is about democracy in Swaziland. We want to organize our country in a better way from this whole history of being dragged into hardship, into poverty, into underdevelopment by a family regime, which Absolutely. constitutes itself as superior to the other, to well, our societies. We want to, to end. To leave it and there for now. Thank you so much uh, for your time, Dr.